I'm Morgan, I'll ask again. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Um, this is also the one where I think it first comes up that the average, like, the average age in their little group of the people there, for like the 18 or 19 or whatever, is about 19 or 20 years old. And they're only led by a 24 year old Jim Cross or whatever. And I don't know. I think they're all just like way too young and they're inexperienced, and so it just made things five times worse for them. Mm -hmm. So they kind of talk like they're old men. <coughs> yeah. On the bottom of 34, it talks about Norman talking about his dad. I'll tell you something, O'Brien. If I could have one wish, anything, I'd wish for my dad to write me a letter and say it's okay if I don't write any medals. It's all my old man talks about, nothing else. So we can't wait to see my medals. That's that, that's that same guy actually okay. that's that yep. himself. Yeah. Okay, look at page 36. This is about stories. Last paragraph. Stories are for joining the past to the future. Stories are for eternity when memory is erased when there's nothing to remember except the story. It's kind of he's first getting at that idea of why is he telling the story. No matter what the story is, no matter that it's true. Anyone have any comments about this little quote? Or any lines? What, Megan? 36. I put a quote that said stories are for joining the past to the future. Mm -hmm. uh, Do stories matter? <coughs> uh, depends on the story. Yeah, which goes right into On the Rainy River, the next one, which we know is totally made up. It didn't happen. None of it. He never went north. He never met this Elroy, right? All made up. Surprise! On the Rainy River. It's totally made up. None of it happened. What? This whole book? Wait, so did he live in Minnesota? This chapter. Yeah, he's from Worthington. My grandma knows his. What? Does he still live there? I don't know that was serious. Yeah, so how does that change your mind now that you know it didn't, it didn't happen? It does. Well, part of this book is true then. Yeah, does yeah. it like any of it true? Does it matter? No. I think, like, I think it's yeah. a good way of explaining this. Like, what has brought to the foreman like, on the boat when he was crying and stuff? Does it doesn't really happen when he's like, on the boat? I think it's symbolic of how he was actually feeling about the war. It's just a way of expressing it. Yeah. Well, because he even says that, like, he made, he did, he still thinks he made, like, the wrong choice because he didn't stand for the war, mm -hmm. but he ended up surrendering into it. How do you know it's not true? <coughs> You're going to read the interview in a little bit where he tells you it's not true. Oh. Oh, right. kind of because he, every day that summer at the hog place, he worked at the hog place, he went to work, he went home. He thought about his draft notice. He went to work, he went home, he thought about his draft notice. Every day was the same thing. So if he would have just told it that way, would it have made the impact that the story did? Exactly what you two said about the thoughts, the contemplating, what am I going to do, should I leave, should I stay? The impact isn't the same. Any other comments about on the Rainy River? It seemed like the hog plant was kind of like a foreshadowing. He was working out the blood clots and the blood would just spray everywhere. Yep. Yeah. And it would be snowy and like it would take all my stuff out. Yeah, I like that too. Do you think people are actually prone to going to war? <laughs> Good question. What do you guys think? I guess. They all would have just ran away. It could have been really bad. It just, I don't know. We, <coughs> we could have said we went to one if nobody would have went over. No, we, we didn't win. Do it. Even though, yeah, I guess nobody really won, but. They stood up for the 
He's fine. Yeah. Like he woke up one day and he was with it. Like he could hear he everything. Knew, he I was thinking that happened over ten years because he was like, how are they gonna pay for that? Once Doesn't matter. Like you have a million like, dollars. Your insurance has to cover everything. Um, we talked to Garrett and I, our boss is like seven years old. <coughs> So we ended up like asking him. We had lunch with him, and he ended up telling us about like how he was in the National Guard. And the only reason he went to the National Guard, he didn't get drafted, but he and a bunch of guys went into the National Guard. And it was a six-year term, and only they de they never had to go over. And he knew that. And there, like he was working at a bank, and the guy at the bank was like, "Hey." go into the National Guard, otherwise you're going to get drafted. It's a safer. And he went in the National Guard, never had to go over. All he said was that six summers of his life sucked because he had to go to like California and to boot camp up for yeah. six months or whatever. So that's how a lot of them kind of got over there too. Yeah. Someone asked in your notes, I don't remember who it was, um, why if he was in college did he have to go? And I don't know the answer to that. That might be a good question for like Mr. Dunn or Mr. Bertram. I don't know. I don't know why he didn't get the exemption. Like he graduated. Oh, is that yeah, it? I think, so. I think he was graduated. Because he, he got accepted yeah. to Harvard for graduate school. Yeah. Oh, he was yeah. between? Yeah. You're right. Good. So he got there. All right, we're going to stop here. I need you to put your desk back, please.